before we set sail west, we gotta make a little bit of a detour to a little country called Korea. It's here that we find our first non-Japanese ring movie, The Ring Virus. Now you might be wondering, why haven't I heard about this before? And the reason is very simple. It's bad and I hate it. Ring was an hour and a half and it used its time wisely. The Ring Virus adds nearly 20 more minutes to that while not actually adding anything more to the plot. It is the same as Ring, almost beat for beat, just more boring. So very boring. The flashbacks and video sequences get pretty creative, but uninspired. The shots that aren't direct recreations from Ring are flat. The whole movie just is not interesting to look at. And there are some downright strange choices. Like instead of warping your face, you get elf ears, but there's not enough of these choices to make it enjoyably bad. And there's nothing else new added to this other than the fact that it's Korean. Asakawa's Korean equivalent is exactly like Asakawa, except she has a daughter instead of a son. And Ryuji's stand-in is just the absolute worst. He is just an asshole. There is nothing endearing about him, and he is a dick to the female lead until he dies. And that is all I can pull out of the ring virus. There is no reason to watch this. Unless you really, 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 absolutely just want to see ring with Korean actors. Outside Outside of that, there is nothing that the Ring virus has that Ring hasn't done better. I'm reading back over my notes right now, having watched this movie only a few days ago, and it's already completely faded from my memory. Much like Rasen, this movie wants to unmake itself, and that's why you have not heard of it. But let's continue on with a movie that more of you probably know about. So the Ring virus was a bust. But that doesn't mean that every single foreign remake of Ring would be terrible. There was so much going against the Ring from the start that it is almost unfair. It is not just a remake, but an American remake. And an American remake of a horror movie. Horror remakes on their own aren't too good, let alone foreign horror remakes. It never turned out well before, and it has never turned out well since. And this is why it is all the more impressive that The Ring is not just good for what it is, but actually improves some aspects of the original. Note the sum there. Yes, this is still your favorite channel, Japanophile, where we fetishize the fuck out of Japanese culture. The Ring, much like The Ring virus, is just Ringu again. But it's almost embarrassing how much The Ring gets right, where the ring virus completely failed. Naomi Watts stands in for Asakawa, and alongside her is a kid and some guy who play Yoichi and Ryuji. They don't know David Lynch, so I don't care about either of those two. Being an established actress from things like Twin Peaks The Return, Mulholland Drive, and Book of Henry gets Naomi Watts the first honorary Japanophile Good Non-Asian Actor Award. Congrats, Naomi. You deserve this. The Ring is a horror movie through and through. It plays up a lot of the elements that Ringu downplayed, but I think it's to the Ring's benefit. Stuff like the cabin where Asakawa watched the Ring tape was just a plain cabin that you wouldn't be surprised to see on some sort of campground anywhere. In The Ring, it's this gothic horror cabin that makes you feel like there's something spooky in there. Ringu was a mystery thriller with horror elements, and The Ring is a horror movie. But the investigation behind The Ring curse is still the focus. It is not the main focus. The characters aren't slowly unfolding a mystery with the audience like in Ringu. They're being shown the backstory in visions and tapes, which sounds worse, but actually plays a lot more to The Ring's most important strength, the visuals. Visually, The Ring exceeds any of its previous entries on either coast. It has a blue-green color palette throughout most of the movie, and it really works towards its atmosphere. Samara has a plethora of visual cues, mostly in animals and insects, that let you know when she's working behind the scenes without actually seeing a creepy ghost girl herself. In comparison to Ringu, it's very flashy, but for the tone that The Ring sets, it works. But I have one major gripe with The Ring. A lot of things feel dumbed down or spelled out. There's a lot of little examples, but the best one is when the ex-wife meets the girlfriend. In Ringu, Mai unlocks the front door to Ryuji's apartment with her set of keys. 
she's holding groceries in her arm. Right away, you can tell that she's living there. Ryuji awkwardly introduces them before hurriedly leaving with Asakawa. Mai changes the formula on the blackboard out of spite for the two of them. Asakawa is clearly put off by all this, and shows this by becoming more cold and more professional to Ryuji just as they were starting to get closer. In the ring, Noah's girlfriend takes the elevator up to his work area. I feel like movies would call this a loft, but fuck you. Noah tries to downplay their relationship while the girlfriend starts touching and kissing him just to stop him from making excuses, or maybe also to get under Naomi's skin. Naomi then storms off, very openly upset. To me, this feels like someone just writing down to the audience. Assuming that we couldn't pick up on visual cues or the acting itself, instead spelling out the entire character relationship. And it's in a few other places too, especially concerning Samara. Another thing that the ring does is strip away any reference to Japan, and strangely enough, I am okay with this. In my book, you either go all in or you don't. And one of my biggest problems with the grudge, what is the point of setting a movie in Japan if you're going to fill your movie with white people? The ring completely sidesteps that, and as a result, it feels more original. The island and the horse stuff work in place of Ring's psychic backstory. Although I prefer the Ringu version in this case, I'm glad it was different. I've seen that backstory three times, or four if you count zero, so actually seeing a different take on it that puts a different spin on Samara and her mother was refreshing. But it still respects its source material, and while there are bound to be visual nods to Ringu, the Ring took one of Ringu Tugu's better scenes and completely transplanted it. As some have pointed out, it even has visual reference to Dark Water, another Japanese horror movie by the same director as Ring. The Ring was a huge hit in America, and for a good reason. American audiences were introduced to a new kind of horror, and on top of that, it's just a plain good movie. This is the only time where I can actually say if you've watched the original, you might want to check the remake out, or if you have no intention of watching Ring because you're some sort of fucking racist. <laughs> Holy fuck is this a step down. The Ring 2, spelled out for some reason, ditches the flashy visuals of The Ring for a more drab and boring palette. Clearly, this is a hack Hollywood director who only ever directed, uh, um, Ring. Ringu. The Japanese Ring. Um... This is awkward. Hideo Nakata returns to direct The Ring 2, which means that this looks a hell of a lot more like Ringu than it does The Ring. So Nakata is directing, which means The Ring 2 had a halfway decent chance of being good. Except they got the screenwriter of the Transformers movies. Oh, The Ring 2 has no reason to exist. All the characters and plot lines wrapped up in The Ring. The original Ringu 2 Goo even works around this by making Mai the main character. Not that it saved that movie from being bad either. The Ring 2 starts with an opening that's so tangentially related to everything that it feels like a generic slasher movie. This will not be the first time that I will say that about a Ring movie. The Ring, and by extension the original, had an opening kill that gave Naomi a motivation to investigate the Ring curse. It was someone related to her. In The Ring 2, the opening kill is loosely tied back as a way of Samara finding Naomi again? Although it doesn't look like she needed to find Naomi's son to haunt him, so it's really just fluff. This brings up my biggest problem with The Ring 2, is that this kid won't shut up. Aiden is a little snot who insists on calling his mother by her first name even before he got possessed, and he just does not stop saying her name either. Rachel! 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 You know, it wouldn't kill you to call me mom now and again. What's even worse is that he is the crux of the plot. Everything revolves around the most annoying actor in the movie. The mystery, and I am using big quotations here, is that Aiden is slowly being possessed by Samara. Until I assume he becomes her, or becomes just like her, they're not clear in the movie, which doesn't work to the movie's favor. The problem with this is that we know what's happening right away, and when Naomi fucks off for a quarter of the movie to find out why it's happening, our answer is just that it is happening. 
we get to see Samara's mother, who I guess isn't even dead, despite that she was very heavily implied to be dead, at least in the first movie. And the movie tries to expand Samara's backstory just a little bit. The problem is that it doesn't. In the end, we know just as much about Samara as we did going in. I'd probably complain if they laid everything out and just told her backstory, but I'm much more upset that the movie teases the audience and then just does nothing with it. So because there's nothing new or interesting happening, that means that the movie is pretty boring except the last half hour. Uh, although there is one very important scene in the very beginning. Because I would be remiss if I did not mention this scene. The ring links Samara to horses. The ring, too, forgets that entirely and makes it dear. Now, I thought the horse scene in The Ring was a little goofy, but this goes beyond that. Naomi, her child, and her car are attacked by a savage herd of deer that just absolutely wreck it. To make it even better, they are horrible CGI deer. It's completely ludicrous. And I wish the movie had more absurd choices like this, but it doesn't. And it becomes pretty bland until the last half hour. In the final section of the movie, where the screenwriter focused all of his horrible choices, we get a horrible CGI Samara, fake out child murder and death, a heroic sacrifice that actually makes no sense and is done by a woman who has just willingly tried to kill her own son. Best yet, the climax is a Nightmare on Elm Street style you have to fight Freddy in the dream ending. Here's the issue with that, Samara isn't Freddy. Nowhere in the ring is she shown to actually exist in some sort of extra dimension. So when Naomi is pulled into the TV, what is it representing? Is she going back in time or just in a memory? Is this the world inside the TV? Is this the afterlife? Is her physical body there too? Why was the well open if it was closed after Samara had been pushed in it? What the fuck is this place? Yes, I am complaining about the logic of a horror movie, but only because all of this leaps outside of the logic that had already been established by The Ring. And let's not forget Naomi's excellent one-liner. I'm sorry, but we will have to take that award away, Naomi. Boo, I paid $10 for this shit! Boo! Boo, I hate broccoli! Fuck you! The Ring 2 only made back more than enough money to pay my student loans domestically. So the Ring franchise was put on ice for a decade. And with a movie like The Ring 2, who could blame them? Surely they won't make the same mistake twice. Who? Who was asking for this? And why? This is actually the worst. This is actually the worst one yet. The ring virus was boring. Rasen was beyond stupid. Rings actually manages to do both. This doesn't even feel like a ring movie. It feels like the script for a thriller that the studio had no faith in, so they shoehorned in ring references. It also has the worst of modern horror cliches. Bad lighting, bad acting, jump scares, horrible dialogue that no person in their right mind would ever say. I hope if you learn anything from an education, it's that more than one theory can be true. I didn't kill Sky. And I did. But the cops don't deal in such ambiguities. What's worse is that Rings looks like it actually took cues from Unfriended in terms of using technology to spook the audience. It's weird because this movie starts out a lot worse than it ends. I mean, the very, very start is a completely unrelated slasher death that feels so out of place for the franchise. The movie never links back to this opening scene where a plane full of people are affected by the ring curse. And then we go into the first act that takes place on a college where we get to hear authentic college dialogue. It's cringe inducing. We live a while, eat, have sex when we can. <laughs> and that's it, then we die. Well, there's no need to take notes on that part. Our main character is some chick that's desperately trying to hide the fact that she's not American and doing a very, very poor job at it. I'm looking for my boyfriend. He's supposed to be in your class. 
She's looking for a plank of wood that she calls a boyfriend. She eventually goes to his college to look for him, but instead finds an entire network of people sharing the tape, and it only gets more dumb from there. Over the course of the film, we get horrible leaps in logic. Samara's biological dad for no reason, and so many cringy lines. Rings is weirdly pretentious for a low-budget piece of shit horror movie. It talks about the existence of a soul and claims the tape to be a window into the afterlife. But meanwhile, your main characters are as dumb as bricks dragging their knuckles through this absurd plot. Of course, the culmination of the entire plot is the fucking reincarnation of Samara just like Sadako in Rasen. Except this time, it wasn't absurd enough to make me laugh. Everything is so painfully foreshadowed in advance that you could see every twist coming. It goes as far to foreshadow events that are going to be happening 20 minutes after the foreshadowing. Like, I know why we have this lesson on Greek mythology, it's because you're going to come back to it in 20 minutes. He has to walk away without looking back at her. But he looks think... back to glimpse her and loses her forever. Ninth grade. English lit. <laughs> you know. So don't look back, okay? But what I think annoys me the most is just how much it gets wrong about the Ring series. Even when it's not at its best, Ring is a series of supernatural thriller mysteries, not a plug-and-play disposable slasher movie. So much of Ring and The Ring were built around suspense and atmosphere. In Rings, the soundtrack sounds like a generic action movie. It can't build any tension to save its life. And even the seven-day countdown. What should be the writer's get-out-of-jail-free card when it comes to writing tension is ignored for most of the movie, and when it's brought up, it's like a Final Destination curse. Which also makes no sense if Samara was using these visions to try and kill the main character, because that same character is also supposed to be Samara's new vessel for reincarnation. Rings is one of the worst Ring movies that I've seen, let alone actually one of the worst movies that I've seen. There is no value in this, and if if you are a fan of any of the American Ring movies, you're going to want to stay as far away as fucking possible. I fucking mean it. If I could unmake a movie, it would be Rings. And even worse, Rings has thrown us off course. We gotta go back a few years, because in the gap between The Ring 2 and Rings, we skipped over some stuff. There are exactly two movies that we missed. This is the Sadako duology. In 3D. 